Progress bars. From indicating downloading files to how much XP you need before you level up in your latest RPG, it's inevitable that you've experienced your next progress bar without even noticing. I mean, you're experiencing one right now by watching this video. Ha! <laughs> Made you look. So with how often they're in our lives, let's progress forward and learn how to make one in Adobe After Effects. So we're here in Adobe After Effects and we've got a brand new composition and we're going to start by creating a new solid. So we'll click on the composition, we'll go layer, new, solid like so. And we'll call this our progress bar. It's the size of a comp, we've just picked a random color and we'll go OK. Next what we want to do is pre-compose this. So we're going to right click the layer in our timeline and hit pre-compose and we're going to call this progress bar graphic. Hit OK and then we'll double click on that uh, layer in order to go into that pre-composition. Now selecting the solid that we created a moment before, we'll go to Effect, Noise and Grain and Fractal Noise. For the fractal type we'll go to Dynamic Progressive and we'll bump the contrast up to say 150. If we change the blending mode to overlay we get a bit more of a cool sort of orange yellow sort of look going on and what we want to do is we want to add a bit of movement to this so for the evolution you see here on the stopwatch we're going to hold alt and click and then down below in our expression window we're going to type time times by 100. We'll hit enter on that. If we drag the playhead along you can see we've got this awesome sort of bubbling look going on but we also want to add some lateral movement to give it a feel that it's actually progressing so we'll go back to our effects controls go to offset turbulence and again we're going to hold alt and click on the stopwatch. Now if we give ourselves a bit of space where we can see this expression window we're going to type square bracket time times by 20 comma zero end square bracket. And what that's going to do is that's going to make it move to the right as we drag forward in time. It's not going to move up and down, that's why we've got zero there. It doesn't really matter uh, having that a accurate number because it's just an effect being applied. So now we've got our progress bar graphic doing its cool thing. We can go back to our other composition. So back in our main composition, if we drag the playhead, you can see that's animating like so. Now we want to draw the border that'll go around our actual progress bar. And in order to do this, we're going to click off and then we're going to click on the rectangle tool. And we're going to click in the very middle of the screen. If you don't see these targets, you can go here and hit title action safe and that'll bring up those guides like so. So we'll click in the middle and then holding control, we'll just drag out where we want our progress bar to be. So we'll go for something like that. Now we'll go down to the bottom left and actually open up our rectangle and we want to switch the fill off so we only have the stroke. And I'm going to go up to the top and change the stroke to white so we got a bit of contrast going on. We can label this as our progress bar border. And now we're going to create the actual mask for our progress bar graphic. So if we hit layer new solid, we're going to create another layer and we'll call this progress bar mask. Drag it down between the layers so it's right above our graphics and then using the track mat option here for our graphic we're going to select alpha mat. If you don't see these options and instead you see the other ones you can always click toggle switch modes underneath or the hotkey is F4. So now you'll see it's hidden our progress bar mask layer and it's actually showing that it has a alpha mask here. So now we can drag our actual layer back and you can see where it goes like that. So we can bring it in, bring it out. But you'll notice also that we're not kind of fitting within this border. So if we select our progress bar graphic, we'll go up to the rectangle tool and again, clicking in the middle and holding control. Now we're going to draw an actual mask out. So you'll see we draw a mask and we'll eyeball it to kind of fit into that space. We can turn off our title and action safe so we can see it a bit clearer. And now if we select that mask, we can move it back and forward and you can see it kind of moves back and forward. Now to make sure everything stays together, we're going to create a new null object and we're going to call this our progress bar controller. 
we'll select the other three layers and actually pick whip the parent to it so they're all together. And now we've got a bit more control. We can drag that around, we can scale with the null object or rotate if we want to. And we've got a lot more control over where it is. The other thing we'll do is create a text layer. So we'll click the T tool for text and then click roughly in the middle. And for now we'll type 0%. We'll hit OK and we'll drag it just so it positions itself nicely above. We'll also go down to our timeline window and for that layer, actually parent it to the controller as well. So let's start rigging up our progress bar. If we select the null controller, we can go to effect, expression controls and slider control and we'll name this progress. We'll go above in the effects controls and just lock it so we can easily reference it. And then going down to our text, we're going to click the little arrows until we get source text. Holding Alt, we'll, holding Alt will click, and that'll give us our expression window. And we're going to type math.round, parentheses, and then pick whip our progress slider, like so, and parentheses. And then we're going to type plus, quotation marks, percentage sign, quotation marks. We'll hit enter on that, and now we'll see if we drag our progress, you can see it goes up and down. The next thing we'll do is we'll go down to our progress bar mask, we'll hit P and we'll right click and hit separate dimensions. And we're going to actually set up an expression on our X position. We need to know where the start and the end is. So we'll look for the end and you'll see it's at one minus 198. And then we'll go all the way back to the start and you'll see it's at minus 1772. If we hold Alt and click on the X position, we can now type our expression. We're going to start with a linear expression for this. If you want to know more about the linear expression, there's a new video out that covers everything to do with the linear expression. The link is in the description below. But for now, we'll type linear, parentheses, going to pick whip our progress slider, and then comma zero to comma 100, because we're going from 0% to 100%. And then we're starting at minus 1722, and we're going up to minus 198. We'll hit enter, and then you can see if we drag our progress slider, it goes up and down like so. You'll notice, though, that when we've got our progress bar behind our text, it's a bit hard to read. So what we can do is have a different color text appear when it's actually being overlaid like so. So we'll put our progress slider back to zero. We'll select our text layer and press Control D to duplicate. And this text layer, we're going to change the color of to black. You see we're getting this weird coloring and obviously it doesn't work on black, so we need to use the progress bar mask again. So we'll select our progress bar mask, hit Control D to duplicate. We're gonna slide it in between the layers and then for this layer, which is white, we're going to actually select alpha inverted matte. Select that and then we'll select the progress bar mask again and hit Control D, drag it above our, our other text layer and then we'll hit track mat and then alpha mat like so. Now if we drag our progress slider back and forward you can see it masks out one text layer and masks in the other text layer. So we get that visual of that progress bar and it's nicely contrast against both our yellow and both our white. Now we can go and we can keyframe this progress slider. So if we start at zero seconds, we've keyframed that at zero. Say we go up to 10 seconds, change this value to 100 and then go preview that. We can see that our progress bar changes over time. Now we can keyframe this in a number of ways or use another expression to drive that progress slider. We've got so many options at our disposal. But for now, this is a pretty easy way to create a progress slider. You can see there it's loading up nice and easy and it shows our details like so. And remember we can also keyframe our null object in order to animate this in and out. So we might hit P and keyframe right at the start, move it all the way to the bottom and then maybe move it forward just a, a little bit, bring it back up and there we go we've got an animation that kind of brings in our progress bar as it starts counting. So we're not interrupting the way that our progress bar actually loads by keyframing anything on our null object. So that's how you create a basic progress bar in After Effects. Remember, there's so many different variations that you could do, but they all use the same general technique. 
If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like or to subscribe and let us know how you use the progress bar in your next creations. Until next time, my name is Bench. Thanks for watching.